Aquaman 2 flooded with drama, Jason Momoa allegedly drunk on set, Amber Heard scenes cut, Elon Musk letter to WB and more. These waters are getting choppy. Reddit hosted humiliating documents from the defamation trial between Johnny Depp and Amber Heard on the same day in mid-September that Warner Bros. released the trailer for Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom, a production slated to cost $215 million. This development introduced an additional challenge for the studio producing the film. The court fees for the disclosure of documents from Heard's therapist, Dr. Don Hughes, were covered by admirers of Depp. The scribbled raw notes on a legal pad were a part of Depp's high-profile trial from the previous year, in which he essentially prevailed. They detail an antagonistic Aquaman set where, according to reports, an allegedly inebriated Jason Momoa dressed as Johnny Depp and demanded that Herb be fired from his role as the aquatic superhero Mera. Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom is the title, the maximum streaming date. Jason stated that he desired my dismissal, the notes state. Jason, intoxicated, arrived late to the set, while attired as Johnny, has every ring as well. A commercial is presently playing on the video player. A DC spokesperson refuted Heard's characterization, stating Jason Momo always exhibited a professional demeanor on the set of Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. A representative for Momo declined to comment. A similar sentiment was expressed by others. Jason works his asses off, enjoys the occasional beer like everyone else, but never shows up to set intoxicated, says an eyewitness who was present on the London set in 2021 adding that the two celebrities were observed joking and got along. Furthermore, his attire does not resemble that of Johnny Depp. His attire has consistently adhered to the eclectic aesthetic. A source close to the actress confirmed that the notes pertain to the Aquaman 2 set and are from a session on December 27, 2021. Heard declined to comment further. According to an additional source with close ties to the actress, her attorneys opposed the disclosure of the therapy notes that Depp's attorneys had subpoenaed during discovery. Not only Momo, but also other Aquaman principles came in sharp focus. Heard felt unsupported by the film's director, James Wan, and was treated like a pariah due to her high-profile legal dispute with her ex-husband, according to the therapy session. Hughes notes regarding Wan's state, He raised his voice at me and said, I can't even post about Aquaman. He implied that the error was my responsibility and that I should apologize. Due to the blackout, nobody could take selfies with me on set. Wan avoided providing a comment. James is known for treating cast and crew members with the utmost respect and for fostering a positive collaborative environment on set. The Aquaman films were no exception, according to the DC spokesperson. Nevertheless, Heard was on the verge of termination, according to sources from both parties who spoke to Variety. Due to her lack of chemistry with MoMA, the studio and Juan decided to remove the actress from the sequel after the 2018 release of Aquaman. The studio and Juan informed the attorney for the actress, Carl Austin, of its decision via letter. DC Films executive Walter Hamada testified regarding the chemistry issue in the defamation prosecution. According to these sources, the decision to eject Heard occurred before Depp filed suit against the actress in 2019 and was unrelated to him. Similarly, Momo refrained from participating in the deliberations. An alternative source, however, refuted the lack of chemistry theory by mentioning that Heard passed a chemistry test with Momo before being cast as Mira, surpassing two other actresses, including Abby Lee, who also underwent a similar chemistry test. According to a source with knowledge of the behind-the-scenes dispute, a studio ultimately refrained from terminating Heard's employment because her ex-boyfriend, Elon Musk, instructed one of his litigators to deliver a scorched-earth letter to Warner Bros, threatening to burn the house down if the actress was not rehired for a sequel. Warner Bros acquiesced and approved Heard's progress. Musk declined to comment in response to a request. James Gunn and Peter Safran, the heads of DC Entertainment, are preparing to wrap up the previous regime's superhero lineup with the December 20 release of Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. Concurrently, the narrative is being revisited. Four months after the June 2022 arrivals of Warner Bros. Chiefs Pam Abbey and Mike DeLuca, Gunn and Safran, the four executives have been burdened with DC duds they inherited, including The Flash $271 million worldwide and Blue Beetle $128 million worldwide this year. Despite this, the Aquaman sequel exhibited promise, given that the character's debut film grossed $1.15 billion globally and became the highest-grossing DC film of all time. The film continued to undergo testing in the 1960s despite the revision, which prompted a new cut. The film is an echo of previous regimes, a source claims. It is the final vestige of the Snyderverse and nobody is particularly interested in claiming it as their own, stating that the film completed reshoots in less than a week and remained on schedule and within budget. 
Similar to Flash, Aquaman is unable to shed its lame duck trappings as the DC Universe is undergoing a complete overhaul under new leadership, which is the top priority of Warner Bros. Discovery CEO David Zuslav. None of the actors, including Ben Affleck, Henry Cavill, Gal Gadot, Ezra Miller, and Moma, who was appointed by Zack Snyder for Justice League and Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice will reprise their roles in the new DC Universe in character. Although Momo might reappear, it would not be as Aquaman. The actor reportedly has discussions regarding the role of Lobo, either in the gun-written and directed 2025 reboot Superman, Legacy, or in a standalone film. Viola Davis, who portrayed Amanda Waller in both of the most recent Suicide Squad films, will, in a perplexing turn of events, reprise her role as Waller in the gun safer in DC Universe in the upcoming Max series Waller and potentially in the new Superman tentpole. Peacemaker, a Guns Max series that will return for a second season, and star John Cena, is an additional outlier. In the interim, uncertainty has arisen regarding the identity of the series' ultimate gatekeeper. Max is creatively engaged with the DC slate in contrast to the Marvel-Disney relationship where Marvel controls the creative process and Disney Plus merely distributes the content. Gunn and Saffron lack the autonomy that Marvel's Kevin Feige possesses. According to a Max source, collaboration between the DC team and Max executives Sarah Aubrey and Casey Bloys has been impeccable, including on the forthcoming series The Penguin, production of which was halted when the WJ strike began, but is scheduled to resume once the SAG AFTRA strike concludes. Despite this, there are those on the set who are certain that Universal or another company will acquire Warner Bros. within the next two years, which would render recent DC subplots and disruptions seem trivial. Ultimately, they need DC to function regardless of who owns it. Billion Roberts, Rich Greenfield of Lightshed, or Zaslav advises the venture capitalists and Wall Street analysts from Lightshed. Warner Bros. will publicly support the film in anticipation of the Aquaman sequel and hope for a China release similar to those of Barbie. The Flash, and Shazam, Fury of the Gods. Considering that the initial Aquaman grossed almost $300 million exclusively in China. However, such China numbers have since disappeared. In contrast, it Aquaman's total of $35.1 million and $25.9 million. Barbie and The Flash failed to generate close to that amount in the Middle Kingdom in 2018. Momo and Heard will not be promoting the film at this time due to the ongoing SAG AFTRA strike. The stars will, however, junk it if the strike concludes shortly given the Gyo Uga's agreement. This would make it difficult for Warner Bros. and Wan to evade Heard's allegations that her role was substantially reduced. According to sources with knowledge of the production, at least two Heard scenes were eliminated from Aquaman 2, an action sequence in which Mera battled Black Manta Yahya Abdul Mateen Idu, and a romantic scene involving Moma. An additional indication of friction is concealed in plain sight. Momo unfollowed Heard on Instagram this summer. According to one source, he prevented her from pursuing him. Putting turmoil aside, the sequel's box office performance may be adequate. Initial screenings of the first Aquaman were similarly lackluster. The film gained momentum during post-production. According to a studio source, Aquaman 2 is progressing comparably. Initial monitoring indicates considerable interest and compares the film's debut to that of the original Aquaman. Jeff Bach, a box office analyst with Exhibitor Relations, states, Everyone is down on DC. But there is a chance that Aquaman could still play like gangbusters due to lack of product, especially with a limited competition during the holiday season. The right film at the right time is sometimes all that is required. This concludes the video for the day. Have you enjoyed it? Please leave your insightful response in the section below labeled comments, and remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel for additional informative and engaging videos.